Hello and welcome, my name is Connor from Luxia Smart Homes and you have recently downloaded our guide 5 Crucial Points to Creating the Perfect Smart Home. Now you've had that for a couple of days so I gather you have taken the time to read through it and you probably want to learn a little bit more. So I'm going to tell you how to set up and install your very own home automation software. Now this software is the exact same software that we use for our clients on a daily basis. So I'm going to tell you how to install it, how to get it all set up and you can do it all by yourself at home without any expert help and it shouldn't take any longer than 20 minutes and it shouldn't cost you any more than £70. Now the software that we use is a free and open source piece of software so anyone can download it, anyone can install it, anyone can use it and we're going to show you exactly how to do that but firstly you are going to need a couple of things. Now the first thing that you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi and this is the most expensive thing that you're going to be purchasing. Okay, you can probably pick one of those up for around £60 these days, get them on Amazon. I will leave links in the description below. I will also leave links to any websites or any bits of software that we visit and use today. Now next thing that you're going to need is a micro SD card to fit inside of your Raspberry Pi and you are also going to need a micro SD card reader that you can plug into a computer. And finally, an ethernet cable to connect the Raspberry Pi up to your network when we are all finished. So let's start by grabbing our micro SD card and our micro SD card reader. And we're gonna plug this in here and then we're gonna connect this to a laptop so we can read it. So now we've got our micro SD card connected, we want to go and download the Raspberry Pi OS. Again, I will link this in the description below. So you just want to come down here and you want to either download for Windows if you're on Windows or download for Mac OS if you are using a Mac. So now you've got your micro SD card connected to the computer and you've got the Raspberry Pi software installed and loaded. We want to choose our device. Now it will bring up a list of all of the different Raspberry Pis. You want to select the Raspberry Pi that you have bought. If you're not sure, go back and check online if you've bought it from Amazon or if you have an invoice. And if you're still not sure, you should be able to open the Raspberry Pi up if yours is in a case. And you'll see the board inside here. On the board, it will be written as to what model you have. So in this case, we've got the Raspberry Pi 4. So we'll click that back on and then we will select Raspberry Pi 4. So now you have selected the correct Raspberry Pi device, you want to choose the operating system. So we're going to hit choose OS and we're going to hit other specific purpose OS. And then we are going to click home assistant and home automation. And we're going to click on home assistant. And we're going to hit home assistant OS 11.2, the one at the top here with a little blue house. So now we have our Raspberry Pi selected, we've got our operating system selected, we just need to select our storage device, which in this case is the micro SD card that we've plugged into our computer. So if we click on this here, you'll see the mass storage device. Now you might only have one, you might have a couple pop up if you have multiple storage devices connected to your computer. Be very, very careful which one you click, all right? Confirm that the one you are selecting is definitely the correct one, all right? Make sure you are selecting the micro SD card, not some other storage device that you have hooked up. Now you can do that by checking the size, make sure that the size matches, or if you're really unsure, unplug your micro SD card and you'll see it disappears. And then you can plug it back in and it'll pop back up like that. And now you know that is definitely the correct one. So we're gonna select that there. And now you've got all three things selected. You want to hit next and It'll just tell you that it's going to erase the device, so it's going to do a format. Just hit yes, because that's what we need it to do. So make sure there's nothing else on there that is precious that you need to keep, because it does need to be formatted. So that's going to do its thing, and we'll be back when it is all ready to go. So this process does take a little while, so I would advise that you actually go away and get yourself a cup of tea, because it's not a quick process. It will first write the data, so it will say that it is writing, and then it will say that it is verifying, which is the second step. As you can see, it's currently verifying. Um, so yeah, nearly there, but like I say, may as well grab yourself a cuppa while you wait. All right, so there we have it. We now have Home Assistant OS 11.2, which is the latest version of the Home Assistant operating system, and it has been written to our mass storage device. We can now remove the SD card from the reader. So hit continue there, and we can now take our micro SD card from our reader and we can go over to our Raspberry Pi and put this in. 
All right, so we've got our micro SD card here flashed with the Home Assistant operating system and we've got our Raspberry Pi 4 ready to go. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna look for the micro SD card slot, which is here on ours. And we're gonna take our micro SD card and we're just going to pop it into the Raspberry Pi here until it fits in nice and snug. So you can see there, our micro SD card is fitted all the way in. Now we're going to connect up the power supply for the Raspberry Pi, which ours is a USB-C here. Plug that in, so that will begin to boot up. And then we're going to grab an Ethernet cable, okay? And we're going to plug this into our LAN port that you can see there. So we're going to hook that up. And the other end of this Ethernet cable should be plugged into your router. And if it is plugged up correctly, you should see some little lights on the LAN cable there letting you know that it has a connection and it is indeed passing data. So now that that is all hooked up, we are going to make our way back to the computer for the next step. All right, so we have got our micro SD card formatted. That has got the operating system on. That is then plugged into our Raspberry Pi, which is powered up and connected to our network. All that's left to do is access the user interface and begin messing around with our smart home. So to do that, you want to jump onto a computer, get onto a web browser, Google Chrome, whatever it might be, and you want to type in home assistant dot local colon 8123 enter and that will bring you to the user interface which should look something like this you'll see it is preparing home assistant and it can take up to 20 minutes you can actually show details down here and it will show you exactly what it is doing so just leave this alone let it do its thing again grab yourself a cup of tea and come back when it's done. Try not to interfere. Don't try unplugging it and plugging it back in. Just be patient, let it do its thing and come back when it's ready. Okay, so it is ready to go and you can see we can now create my smart home, but below that you will see a restore from backup option. Really, really important if there is ever a problem with your installation, if anything was to corrupt or if anything was to go wrong, or you break it, okay? Because if you don't know what you're doing, this is very, very easy to break. So if you do break something, you can reflash your micro SD card. So do the steps that we've just done, put it back in as a fresh installation, and then you can restore from a backup if you had one downloaded. But we're just going to create my smart home and you can see we're gonna create our user. So I'm gonna create our user here. I'm gonna give it a name, Connor, username is Connor, our password. And then we're gonna confirm that password there. And then we're gonna hit create account. And you can see we can enter a location for our home assistant. So this will base any automations, um, like when, you're, you, when you arrive home, for example, if you wanna arrive home and have the lamp turn on or when you leave the home and you want all the lights to turn off, this is the location that it will use. So it is very important that you set this to the correct location. And then we're gonna select our country. I'm gonna scroll all the way down at the bottom, all the way down here, and we're gonna find United Kingdom. Next. And here you can share like your diagnostics and your usage and all different types of data. We're not gonna do that, we're just gonna hit next. And you can see here it has already detected loads of compatible devices. So it's found some Bluetooth devices, it's found our bond. It's found Shelly's, Unified Protect, ESP Home. So any existing devices you have here, maybe you've got Philips Hue, uh, maybe Hive, stuff like that, it will show up here and you can add it in straight from the setup page. We're just gonna finish and not do any of that though. And there we have it, Home Assistant, okay? One of the most powerful home automation systems out there. One thing I will show you, settings, devices, Okay, you can see all of the different things here that it's detected already on our network. But if you hit add integration down here, these are all of the different integrations that you can add. Okay, so as you can see, it is absolutely massive and it goes on and on and on. There is loads and loads and loads of different stuff in here. So this is exactly what we use for our clients. Um, obviously our installation isn't on a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card. The reason for that is because it's not massively reliable. This is very much a DIY installation. It is quite likely that when you start to grow your smart home and you start adding more devices, it will slow down. You will notice a slower response time. 
just due to it being on a Raspberry Pi and running over a micro SD card. Micro SD cards can only be, um, they can only read and write data so many times before eventually giving up. So eventually the micro SD card will die. It will die a lot quicker than say an SSD. So yeah, that's why we don't use them. But for a DIY installation, this is absolutely perfect. And if you enjoy it and you, you know, kind of get hooked on it, then you can follow one of the more advanced installations and have a more stable smart home. There we have it. That is how to download Home Assistant at home all by yourself. Now that would cost, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 pounds at most. Most expensive thing here is the Raspberry Pi. Like I said, the software itself is actually free. And the best thing is everything is local. So all of this is contained to your house. It's not connected to the cloud. There's no reliance on another company or third party server. Everything, this whole bit of software, all of your smart lights, your heating, everything will be running on the Raspberry Pi that we've just hooked up. So it's all local to your home, which is absolutely brilliant. And um, so in terms of data and privacy, it's far superior than other options out there. So yeah, there we have it. Home Assistant installed all by yourself. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.